Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in the Orthodox Understanding of Salvation by Veniamin, published in 2013. We're going to look at our final lesson in Theoria. It'll be pages 125 to 135, and we conclude Theoria by discussing what we mean what the Orthodox faith means by the concept mystical theology. What is meant by the concept of mystical theology? What is involved in their affirmation of mystical theology? Let's go to block one, the dialectics of mystical theology. Within the divine economy, theology is both cataphatic, it can make conceptual affirmations, and epiphatic, it is also beyond concept. The transfiguration was an event beyond conceptual expression, revealed yet remaining a mystery, soteriological and belonging to the divine economy. So it's not, the transfiguration isn't an event that we can contain in our own finite concepts. It is the revelation of transcendence. It's the revelation of deity, the revelation of divinity beyond all finite concepts. So we've got to remember that. Now block one note two, infinitely transcendent light surpasses the secular intellect expressing signs rather than concepts and Christ's radiant face signified his divinity and the radiant clothing signified the spiritual lagoi of creation and mystical theology can only express this truth by dialectically entering into apophatic contemplation and then returning to cataphatic signification so it's a it's a, a mystical ascension to the uh, contemplative side of doing theology, and then a return to formulation of signs for the kingdom. So it's a, this a mystical contemplation coupled with signification, and signs are fluid. They aren't rigid like concepts. Signs are fluid that point to that which is greater than themselves. So we formulate theology in signs, but we're back and forth from contemplation to signification, and then back into contemplation, then back into signification. Cataphatic to apophatic, and back to cataphatic. So block one, note three, resultant mystical theology. It's both monad and triad. It is Trinitarian. It's apophatic beyond concept, and cataphatic, able to be signified, and it is attentive to the lagos and the multiple lagoi. In other words, it is essentially mystical and dialectical. Orthodox theology is essentially mystical and dialectical, and both of those matter, mystical and dialectical. Let's move on to block two, further refinement of mystical theology. There are two forms of revelation. Fusikas is the natural created order, uh, and that ordering of creation is the revealing of a creator. And then greptas, written scriptures, empowered, both empowered and both attained by the Holy Spirit. The two forms of revelation together equals the Lagoi of revelation, the uh, expression of the Lagos. It is expressed as the ordering of creation, and the Lagos is expressed as written scripture. So that's your Lagoi. And that the Lagoi bring us to divine gnosis, the divine gnosis. The radiance of Christ and the transfiguration 
along with Moses and Elijah, reveals the deeper meaning of the Old Testament law and prophets, that the eternal logos lies behind all Old Testament testimony and all Old Testament narrative action. And this mystical theology delivers us from the bondage of sin because it is pointing toward our teleology of attaining unto theosis. Therefore, block two, note three, the conclusion. Revelation plus gnosis equals liberation. An understanding that is beyond concept, beyond the sensible, beyond the nomada, beyond conceptual law, empowering us to become the logikoi, and that is empowering us to become spiritual, logical beings, spiritually logical disciples. And that is who we are. Our logic is the logic of the eternal logos. As believers, we view creation behind the veil of finitude and perceive the working backdrop of the eternal logos moving toward fulfillment of kingdom. So we believe in and we spiritually perceive a logos logical teleology. Let me wrap up this final lesson with uh, the threefold aspect of mystical theology. So we're going to look at three aspects of what makes orthodox theology uniquely orthodox theology. So block three, note one. Number one, it is apophatic theology. It's responding to the transfigured light of Christ, which is beyond the disciples' capacity to grasp it with finite concepts. It is a mustique theologia. It is mystical theology only, and it's only to be grasped in a contemplative way, period. So, first of all, it is apophatic theology beyond finite concepts. Second, it is cataphatic theology. It does have three categories of expression. We can express the divine action of the Lord in creation, the manifestation of his energia. We can um, apprehend the divine providence, the pronoia, providence of the work of the triune Godhead in creation, and third, the divine judgment, Croesus. So, energia, pronoia, and Croesus. Divine action, divine providence, and divine judgment may be apprehended through spiritual insight and spiritual perception and can be, in a very positive way, articulated as signs of the kingdom. So there is a affirming, there is an apophatic negation expression, and a cataphatic affirmative expression, and then there is a theology of the divine economy. God is incomprehensible as an object. He is recognized in his providence and in his judgment, where everything is directed toward its telos. In other words, we apprehend the living Lord God and the triune Godhead as it moves creation toward the eschaton, the teleology of the divine eschaton. And so we look behind the veil of finitude. We look for the work of the Holy Spirit in bringing people and bringing historical situations to God's intended future. And then we are called by the call of Christ to participate in those tendencies toward God's kingdom future. And in that way, we attain unto our directed goal, our teleology, which is theosis, unification with the Father through Christ. So let's do a quick recap here. Let's go to block one. And in block one, we have to understand note two, that the transfiguration is an infinitely 
transcendent event. It surpasses secular concepts. It surpasses secular intellect. We can express it as signs rather than concepts. And Christ's radiant face, face signifies his divinity, and his radiant clothing signifies the spiritual lagoi of creation. And this is mystical theology, and it is to be understood dialectically. We enter into apophatic contemplation and then return to cataphatic signification. We enter into contemplation and then out of contemplation we form our signs of the kingdom. But it's ongoing dialectic, ongoing dialectical interpenetration between the apophatic theology and the cataphatic theology. So block one, we'd have to take that truth from note two. Now block two, I think uh, note one is good because it explains what the Lagoi are. So I like note one. There are two forms of revelation in Orthodox theology. Fusikas, the created order, creation, and the ordering of creation the uh, ordering of creation according to God's purpose reveals the creator behind creation. And graptos is the written revelation in scripture. So fusikas and graptos make up the lagoi of revelation. And so that's important to remember. So I think block two, we'd have to go to note one. So note one, block two, note two, note, block two, note one. And then in block three, uh, I like note two because it gives us what we can affirm. We can affirm in our mystical theology the energia of God's divine action, the activity of God's divine providence, and the evidence of God's divine judgment. In other words, the... Uh, teleology of God's kingdom. We, in our theology, we articulate the real that people cannot see. They don't perceive the real behind the veil of finitude. Our job is to make the real behind the veil of finitude, and by the real I mean the real of God's kingdom behind the veil of finitude. We need to make that visible for others to see and to recognize so that they will hear the call of Christ. So they will hear the call of the gospel of grace. So they will hear their call to participate. So we can, in, a, in an affirmative way, we can articulate God's kingdom. And we do that in order to proclaim the visibility of the real that lies behind the veil of finitude. Because we see... Christ at work in the hearts of some people who uh, are battling many diverse situations. But if we are open, we can recognize these workings of the Holy Spirit. We can become sensitive to these workings of the Holy Spirit. The more deeply we imprint our heart with Christ, we can become sensitized to these workings of the Holy Spirit. And then we can affirm those and make those visible, and then bring about further participation in the advancement of God's kingdom. So all of that works together. That's going to wrap up our final lesson on the Orthodox understanding of salvation. We've covered 135 pages. We had four lessons in praxis. Then we had a transition lesson. And then we had four lessons in theoria for a total of nine lessons to cover 135 pages and it's a very very good study I think we've been blessed by Veniamin with very sound systematic presentation of the Orthodox faith so I'm very appreciative of this work and it's going to wrap up our final lesson and we will discuss our next project in our next life group meeting <music>